Hi to everyone watching this video. We're going to explain you what is a population stability index, PSI, as we're going to call it from now on. As you can imagine, this could be very technical. However, we found some sources that will help us explain you this term in a more conceptual way. Before we start with PSI, we're going back in time to 1812, when Napoleon tried to invade Russia. More than a century after, Hitler tried to do the same in 1941. You might be asking, are we in a history class? These guys are a bit lost and this has nothing to do with our class of risk and fraud analytics, and especially with PSI. But please, bear with us. Just be patient. We promise this will make sense. Okay, going back to the invasions of Napoleon and Hitler, both of them ended with severe defeat for their armies. We no doubt their armies were far superior to the Russians. So you might be asking, what went wrong? Actually, it was the conditions in which the battles were fought that resulted in these defeats. Russian winters are often held responsible for the fate of these armies. But in reality, both armies were not prepared and bad judgments from Napoleon's and Hitler's men caused them the humiliating defeats. They were very well-trained men, but they were trained in benevolent conditions of France and Germany. This time, the battle was in completely different and extreme conditions, and they couldn't cope with it. Now with this example, our next question is how this is similar to the failure of credit risk models during the financial crisis of 2007 and 2008. Well, as per the document we found, this could be related to the fate of both the French and the German armies. The models were built and trained in a benevolent economic environment and were ill-prepared to deal with extreme economic conditions at the time. Additionally, there were a series of bad judgments by the executives at the financial firms that resulted in the total economic collapse. We hope now everything starts making sense. The moral of the story shared is that we have to keep a close eye on a change in conditions in the currently prevalent environment and training environment. The Population Stability Index is one such index that helps risk managers in performing this task for retail credit scorecards. So now getting into real business, what is the Population Stability Index? PSI gives you a measure of how much the population has changed over a period of time. It also indicates whether a scorecard has degraded over a period of time. PSI can be applied at the score level by binding the scores. Binding meaning transforming the numeric characteristics into a categorical one, as well as regrouping and consolidating the categorical characteristics. For example, if you have data about a group of people, you may want to arrange their ages into a smaller number of age intervals. So coming back to PSI, we have a base data and a target data in hand, both at different time periods. The simple exercise is to find the percentage change in the population over the different time periods. How do we interpret the number we get out of this data? Well, there's a rule of thumb. If PSI is lower than 0.1 indicates little change or no action required. If it is between 0.1 and 0.25, is little change but too small to determine, so still no action required. If PSI is higher than 0.25, is a significant shift and action is required, merits further investigation. It gives us an idea about the stability of the population. Some authors say the stability index lacks sophistication and consistency, but it can be considered in combination with other measures, like the Gini coefficient and case statistic, which allows significance testing. We can as well do the same using chi-square test, but this method happens to be a more industrially accepted one. To better explain PSI, we're going to share a case study related with banking. You are the chief risk officer at Syndicat Bank. It's been a couple of years since your team, in your supervision, has built the auto loans credit scorecard. Since then, the overall risk assessment for process for the bank has improved significantly. Though, being a prudent risk manager, you have asked your team to regularly compare the population for which the scorecard was built and the existing through the door population, which means all the applicants for auto loans. A good place to start this comparison is by checking how two populations are distributed across the risk bands created through the scorecard. This chart is a representation for the latest quarterly comparison your team has performed against the benchmark sample. Here, actual percentage is a population distribution for the latest quarter and expected percentage is a population distributed for the validation sample. Comparing two populations visually is a good place to start. 
the current population seems to have shifted towards the right side of the graph. To a small extent, this is expected, since the scorecards often influence the through-the-door population as the market starts reacting to the approval strategies of the bank. However, the question we need to ask is whether this is a major shift in the population. Essentially, you are comparing two different distributions and could use any goodness of fit measures such as chi-square tests. However, as mentioned before, PSI is an industry-accepted metric that presents some convenient rules of thumb for the same. The population stability index formula is now displayed, where actual is the recent population and expected the development sample frequencies. The results will always be positive. The precondition is positive values for all actual and expected. Let's calculate the PSI for our population. We have already seen the histogram before. On the table, you will see the score bands divided by beans, the actual percentage, expected percentage, the difference between actual and expected, the natural logarithm of the actual divided by expected, and the result is actually the index. The last column in the table is what we care for. Let us consider the score band 251 to 290 and calculate the index value for this row. 6% minus 10% times the natural logarithm of 6% divided by 10% give us a total index of 0.020. The final value for the PSI is 0.0168. It's the sum of all the values of the last column. And measuring before, there's a rule of thumb to interpret the results. The value of 0.168 falls in the second bucket, which indicates a minor shift in population from the validation or benchmark sample. These are handy rules to have. However, one must ask, how is the population shift going to make any difference in the scorecard? Actually, it may or may not make any difference. Each score band of a scorecard has an associated bad rate or probability of customers not paying off their loans. For instance, the score band 251 to 290 in our scorecard has a bad rate of 10%, or one customer out of the population of 10 in this score band won't service his her loan. The population stability index simply indicates changes in the population of loan applicants. However, this may or may not result in the deterioration of performance of the scorecard to predict risk. Nevertheless, the PSI indicates changes in the environment, which need to be further investigated through analyzing the change in macroeconomic conditions and overall lending policies of the bank. In conclusion, the population stability index is one of the metrics to keep a check on changing conditions. However, the idea is clear that one has to capture robust metrics to keep a close look on the ever-changing economic winds to prevent a crash landing. On the other side, Russian winters did change the history of the planet for better. We guess change is not always for bad. Thank you so much for watching this video.